Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Golden Nugget from God's Word. Today we're looking at the topic of walking with the Spirit. Walking with the Spirit. Today we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Uh, so let's jump right into this. It says, I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit, and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The answer to conquering the lust of the flesh, folks, is the Holy Spirit. There is a tug of war. I don't know if you've ever played that game, tug of war, where you got two opposing teams or two opposing people with a rope and they're pulling to see uh, which one's going to win. That is a perfect example of what it's like for you and I as human beings and as Christians. If you are a child of God, if you've been saved, then you, you live with that tug of war going on in your life. And the answer to that conquering, to conquer that, and the lust of the flesh is the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what we're seeing in this scripture today. The flesh fights for dominance. The flesh is contrary to the Spirit. The flesh keeps a person from doing what he should. The flesh fails to keep the law. If you look at what that says again, verse 16, I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. You cannot win this battle of the flesh on your own. The only way to do that is through the Holy Spirit of God. For the flesh desires what it, what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. That's that tug of war that's going on. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. And, and we all have wants and desires. Because of Adam and Eve and the, the choices that they made in the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us that Eve was deceived, but Adam was not deceived. Uh, he made a choice. He exercised the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, Eve saw the tree that it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, which is that pride of life. And so because of those three things that she saw, we all battle that. We all battle that lust of the flesh, the lust of our eyes, and that lust of, of pride in our life, a tree desire to make one wise. That brings us to a place of being wise in our own being. It's not talking about wisdom from God. It's talking about wisdom from self. And, and to have that selfishness within ourselves and live out our lives that way, that is in opposition to the Holy Spirit of God. And so we, as children of Adam and Eve, we have that same battle in our lives. We lust for things in our lives. And it's a battle. It's a daily battle that we must fight. That we must let the Holy Spirit of God fight for us in that thing. And the only way we do that is by following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, strife, uh, which gives us that picture of discord, jealousy, outburst of anger, Selfish ambition, ambitions, uh, dissension, dissensions, which means division, factions, which means rejecting the belief of God, uh, envy, drunkenness, carousing, uh, and, and anything similar. He says, I'm warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, the Bible gives us this picture of the, the works or the acts of the flesh here. And then there's the judgment in verse 21 there. He says, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's, that's the fact. 
The Christian is not told to cleanse himself from the flesh, but that we are to cleanse ourselves from, I said that wrong. The Christian is not told to cleanse himself from the flesh, but to cleanse from the uh, the lust of the flesh. And Galatians 5.16 backs that up. We are to cleanse ourselves from the lust and the filthiness of the flesh. 2 Corinthians 7.1 7, And then finally, we are to cleanse ourselves from the lust uh, and the filthiness, but also the works of the flesh. Romans 13.12 and Corinthians Five, or Galatians 5.19. And if you think about what this is talking about, just think about the very first one that it says there. Sexual immorality. That's a lust of the flesh. Do we see that in the world today? Oh my word, yes we do. It's crazy. The things that are going on in the world today, the, the acts that are unnatural with this gift God has given a man and a woman that is to be contained in holy matrimony. It's not to be outside of that. God has given us this gift, but it has been turned into something dirty. And we have uh, men being with men, women being with women, and we have folks that are confused about their gender for some reason. And uh, all those things, folks, that's all acts of the flesh. God did not cre create anybody to be uh, a person that has uh, a desire to be like a man, to be with another man. God didn't create that. That is an act of the flesh that Satan has sold whoever that person is in the world that's listening. Maybe you're listening to this message today. If, if you believe in that, if you are attracted to another man or you are in some type of a, a situation where, um, oh my goodness, there's even people who are, uh, it's just too disgusting to even talk about, so I'm not going to go there. But you know what I'm talking about. There are things going on in the world that are so unnatural and those things are from the flesh. Satan puts those things with it things within us and your flesh buys into it and you believe in your mind that you're attracted to something that's unnatural. Uh, you are not born that way. God who is perfect and who creates perfectly and who designed the plan out, if you read his book, the Holy Bible, you'll find in there he does not make mistakes and and when God created us, he created us man and woman for that purpose of reproducing and, and having children. And God would not create you to be attracted to someone that's opposite sex or that's the same sex as you. Um, I mean, so much in that very first thing, uh, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger. All those things. Think about adultery. Just think about the sin of that. Uh, and folks, we, we think that adultery is only when you carry out the act. And that's not true. Adultery is even when you're looking at someone of the opposite sex, same sex, whatever. Whatever the sin is. Sin is, is sin there. And if you're looking at someone and lusting after that, after that person, that is sin against God. Um, but we see it happening every single day. Um, people are attracted to someone, and, and I'm not talking about attraction. Um, I'm talking about lusting after someone to where it drives you to an unhealthy place in your life. Um, it's happening in the world every single day with, with most people uh, are battling those things. So what, what is the answer to all this? Well, I told you in the very beginning the answer to this question of how we can live in the Spirit. How do we 
defeat the flesh, well, the answer to that is to walk in the Spirit. Well, Galatians 5.22 tells us what the Spirit's all about. The fruit of the Spirit, in verse 22, is love. And this is that agape love, unconditional love that we have for all people, regardless of, of what they like, what they don't like, what color their skin is, whatever their language is, where they're from, whether they have money, whether they don't have money, whether they are battling something in their life. Maybe they've got some addiction in their life and they're battling it. Maybe it's drugs or alcohol they're battling. Uh, maybe it is a person who is confused on their gender or someone that is gay or lesbian. We are to love them still, to love them and to demonstrate love to them, meaning that we, we share Jesus with them and we tell them that we love and respect them as a person and, and that we pray for them, that God would change their, their life and bring them to a place of, of true, uh, incredible walk walk with the Lord. So love is the first one. Joy is the second thing we see here. Joy is that that joy that is from within. It's that deep down satisfaction of and knowing that you belong to the King and that regardless of what you're going through, and we all go through difficult things in life, but regardless of that, you're just passing through. This is not your eternal home. So peace means that uh, that inner peace is that that word arene, and it means to be at one with God. That's what true peace is all about. It's that conquest, regardless of your circumstances. You've got the assurance in your life that you belong to Him. It's an intimacy with God. That's that's what peace is all about. Uh, patience. Uh, patience just means that you have the ability to uh, long suffering. Uh, you know, it's one of those great traits of God if you think about it. Patience is not anything that anybody enjoys. We want it now, and that's just the way it is. We want problems fixed. We want them fixed now. Or if you're wanting something, you want it now. You don't want to wait until you can afford to pay for it. Um, the lust of the flesh drives all of that to, to want it and want it now. But if you have the patience of God within you, you can wait. You can learn to do that and, and do things right. Um, so patience, kindness, and that's talking about being kind to everybody. Demonstrate love and kindness to, to every person. Goodness means that goodness of virtue and excellence. Faithfulness means that you are faithful to God and you are faithful to the ways of the Lord and that you you do what you say you're going to do, that people can depend on you. They know that you're a faithful person and they can have that trust and, and know that you're going to be there when you say you're going to be there. Gentleness just simply is that that perfect word. Gentle, gentleness means that you are a person that is approachable and that you are not overbearing, that you don't have this harshness about you, but you are gentle, and you have self-control. Self-control is, is speaking to that um, ability to, to restrain yourself from anger. Maybe you have uh, a temper, and self-control keeps you from outbursts. Um, Self-control keeps you from overeating. Self-control keeps you from doing drugs or drinking alcohol or, or looking at pornography or, or whatever. Whatever it is the battle that your flesh is, is leading you to. And, and folks, I, I want you to know that the battle with the flesh is going to be a, a lifelong thing. And, uh, until the day we die, the flesh is going to be battling you. But you can have victory over every battle by the Holy Spirit of God. 
that lives in you if you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit in you can overcome that battle of the flesh. So we simply have to just surrender our lives and quit trying to fight the battle by ourselves, but let the Holy Spirit of God in us lead us and guide us. I, I can tell you when you know you're in a battle because you'll feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in you. It will come upon you and you will feel that within you saying, don't do this. And then you've got that battle going on in your mind, that knowledge of good and evil, reasons why you should do it, reasons why you shouldn't do it. Folks, the moment that starts, that battle of the knowledge of good and evil, that is a a giant red flag to say this is a battle of the Holy Spirit and the flesh. So what are we to do? Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Don't do it. Whatever it is, do not do it. Turn to the Lord and pray and seek His face. He will deliver you. This is a, a battle that every person that's ever been born goes through. Only if you're saved, though. If you don't feel this battle in your life, if you don't have this battle of, of the flesh and the Holy Spirit, that should immediately let you know that you're lost, that you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you may be saying, well, Pastor, why would I want to have Jesus in my life if that means I'm going to have this battle ensue in my life from that point forward. It's because the rewards from that relationship with Christ outweigh this battle. Actually, it gives you joy that is, well, like the old song says, unspeakable, full of glory. That's what the Holy Spirit of God living in you will give you if you will surrender your life to Jesus. Ask Him into your heart. The Bible says confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you. He rose again on the third day. That He's coming back for you someday and you will be saved. I pray that if you haven't prayed that prayer that you'll do that today. Reach out to me and let me know if, if you need me to pray with you. I'd be glad to, to do so. Um, I'll give you my phone number and you can call me directly and we can talk on the phone and, and I'll pray with you. Just message me after this uh, video and, and let me know if that's something you would like me to do with you. Uh, otherwise, I pray that all of you will have victory over this battle of the flesh. God bless you. Let me pray with you. Father, I lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ. I, li I lift up that one that may be listening today that's lost. I pray you'd save that person today. Father, I ask that you would help me in my own battle with the flesh, Father. Forgive me, Father, when I fail. And, and help me, Lord, to move forward, uh, walking, Father, in, in such a way that is pleasing to you. To realize I can't win the battle by myself, Lord. I need you every hour. So, Father, thank you. I love you, and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great day. I pray you'll be in church on Sunday morning. Uh, if you're not a member here at Benton's Crossroads and you want to visit, we'd love to have you. We're located at 109 East Lawyers Road, Monroe, North Carolina. The zip code is 28110. Uh, you can call the church office if you'd like. That number is 704-753-1291. Uh, email me, bcrpastor at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. Um, have a great rest of your day.